three theories that I I'm throwing out there that I think could be possible. Um, one, I think uh, injury due to, you know, like cutting switchbacks or if he got lost and went off trail, um, getting injured severely enough that he couldn't move. And, you know, he fell into an area where it was really hard for searchers to find him, I think is highly likely, um, very possible. I think theory number two, like um, you mentioned, this part of California does have, you know, in the San Bernardino National Forest, there are black bears and cougars in those mountains. And for a five foot tall child, you know, only 150 pounds, uh, you know, he might not be a target for a cougar, but, you know, black bear definitely would be an issue if he came across, if he startled one or, um, you know, came across and had an interaction with a black bear. Uh, that definitely would be an issue. But like, uh, you know, we've said in other episodes, there would be evidence of a bear attack. They would find, you know, not going to get, you know, grisly about it, but they would find, um, you know, either remains in the, the bear scat or they would find um, signs of a struggle on the ground. Uh, so, if, you know, yeah, and it seemed like it seemed like where his stuff was located is, I mean, let's be real too. Bears don't go out of their way to like travel hard areas. They're going to go on trails and paths as well. They're going to go on yeah. game trails, even if it's not human trails. And from what it sounded like, some of the stuff they were finding was on the edge of mountain slides and cliffs that wouldn't make sense for an animal to even go. Yeah. Uh, so my, my, my personal thought is I'm kind of with Rick. Uh, I think it's a, I think I'm kind of with Rick mainly because of his experience. Oh, for sure. Um, so, I mean, that's obviously convincing me more than anything else. If we're going to go down our normal route of saying animal, I don't think so. Um, I think it was just a, you know, a 13 year old kid that just like I probably would have done, not really listened mm -hmm. and was like, you know, what? I'm not going to sit here. I'm going to go back to camp and oh, I don't want to go on the trail. I'm just going to jump down this mountain. You know, he's a, he's a young boy. He's going to yeah do do what young boys do do kind of crazy things but un unfortunately i think he may have lost his way when he was cutting switchbacks and it from what it sounded like when you got off that trail it just continued to get worse and worse and worse and if he got stuck in a situation or to your point if he got injured mm -hmm. um that just makes it almost impossible uh for them to find him yeah i think you know we've also mentioned that bear attacks in the u.s are extremely rare they, they don't happen yeah. very often. And the more populated a park, you would you, you'd probably think, you know, the more populated a park, the higher chance of getting attacked by a bear. But in reality, the busier parks, the wildlife tends to stay farther away from the trails because especially black bears, they're skittish. And they're, they're not going to be, you know, hunting humans out on the trail. So um, I, I do think, uh, you know, an animal attack is probably unlikely. Uh, the third theory I had, which I think is, you know, unlikely based on the location of, you know, items they found would be an abduction. I only say that because he was left alone on a pretty populated trail. Um, it, you know, he could have, no, I agree. I agree with you. I think the photo too is a, a, a dead giveaway. I think that's the thing that confuses me the most is how that got lost. And that's why I also started to think accident, like he slipped and dropped it or something like that. And I just can't, what, what really stinks is that you'd think if that was the case and he dropped it and slid somewhere yeah. when they found that, cause they searched that area pretty heavily that they would have found something else. And it, it really bugs me that I think he, he must've, if he was okay, even if he slipped, he just kept moving. Mm -hmm. And that was like the worst thing he could have done. And that's what we've, we've said it in several episodes is you have, as soon as you realize you're lost, you need to like stop unless you can see a trail and get back to the trail and stop there. Because when you move and they search an area and if you're moving around while they're searching and you miss each other, the, it, it could just be the worst, you know, perfect storm ever where I hate to think of the fact that he might've been alive for a while, but it just kept moving around and kept moving around and they kept finding you know, his things and would have found him too, if he would have just sat still. Yeah. I think that the, the picture in the camera is that's strange to me. I think 
yeah, I think it definitely tells us that he was alive through the evening. And I remember those old cameras. I don't remember if you said it was uh, like one of those disposables that you had to crank. Or... I Yeah, I didn't see, but I'm guessing that's what it was. I mean, yeah, I, so... If you think about back in the 90s, what I would have given a 13-year-old, yeah, right. it would have been one of those like click, 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 click Yeah, one of those cameras. disposable like Kodak, yeah. Yes. Uh, and, you know, maybe it was he was trying to get maybe the flash to work to maybe see in the dark or something. Who knows what he was trying to do, and he was... He accidentally took a selfie of himself. I can't imagine if you're falling down the side of a mountain that you would be able to take a picture of your face even accidentally. But I, my guess is, like like Rick said and like what you have said, is he probably started coming down the mountain during the day and he was cutting you know the switchbacks and he got turned around and got lost. And because he was a child and didn't really have any training or anything, you know, what to do, he probably walked the wrong direction, got even farther off trail, and it, you know, by nightfall, you know, those areas where they're where it's rugged and thick brush, it, you know, it's pretty dangerous to traverse that in the night without any kind of light or headlamp. He probably was, he probably kept walking around through the evening, and, you know, yeah, he probably, you know, tripped and you know fell down the side of a cliff, or who knows what happened, but. I, I agree, you know, with Rick's experience that in this case, I think he unfortunately got lost in that he was lost into the evening and that's when something happened. And these places are so vast that, um, and especially if he fell into an area that is extremely remote and rugged that normal hikers don't go through, you know, they're, they, they may not find his remains or it may be, you know, decades before that happens, if they ever do. Well, and uh, the thing that really discourages me against that, even that happening, <clears throat> is if he's down in one of those ravines with what he said about that scree and boulders coming down from just like a rainstorm. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like that could uh, really just stop any of that from happening. Yeah, who knows? Uh, since 1991, you know, there could have been earthquakes and, you know, heavy rains that have already washed debris over uh, where his remains are. And if that's the case, he'll, they'll never be recovered. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, um, I think this case, unlike some of our other ones is a little more cut and dry based on, especially based on your interview with Rick. Uh, I, yeah, that's why, that's why I like getting the information from the horse's mouth. Some of this down <laughs> there, because it, I think it, it takes, it takes a lot of the ambiguity away from it. Cause a lot of times, we, we get all, we've said this in several episodes, we get all the information we can um, from user accounts. We try and stray away from those, even though uh, it, we try and vet those. So I found Rick through a user form where he basically said, oh, I was on the search and rescue. This is what I think. Yeah. That could have been anybody saying it, but I reached out and talked to him. I, I looked into his background and he legitimately was in that, in that, in, in that situation. So it's nice to get that firsthand account because... I think it helps us with our hypothesis about what actually happened. I yeah. think this one is pretty clear cut that it was just a case of not staying on the trail and not kind of paying attention to the rules of the park. So, yeah. I mean, that's where leave no trace is a whole other meaning in that regard of there's a reason there's marked trails. And if you stay on them, you can pretty much stay safe. If you start wandering off trails, you go through thick, thick brush and you don't know what you're doing and don't have the right equipment it could quite literally mean the end of your life. So part of the show is, is, you know, talking about some of these cases and, and the one, especially the supernatural ones kind of theorizing how fun that is, but it's also a safety aspect. And I, I hope people at least get that message from us too, that the trails are there for a reason. You want to stay on them. Yeah. And we don't want to discourage anyone from going out into the national parks. They're amazing. Oh yeah. It's a great reset. If you're having a, you know, a tough year, or, you know, whatever's going on in your life, you should get out into the national park system as much as you can, but really be, you know, use common sense. And, you know, if you're unsure about things, go and talk to the Rangers. They love talking to hikers. That's what they're there for. They're there to, you know, serve the general public in any questions they have about the park. So utilize that free resource when you're in the park. Some of these Rangers have been there for, you know, decades. So they have a lot of lot of knowledge about what to do, what not to do. Um, yeah. And the, most of them are, you know, every ranger I've ever talked to, pretty, they're pretty cool. They got a lot of stories. And um, so, you know, always going, you know, 
when in doubt, go talk to a ranger. <laughs> oh yeah, and and millions of people go every year and no one, and don't have issues. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not all doom doom and gloom every time someone goes to the park. So.